Hello and welcome everybody to the audio podcast, all about the theory of sound, covering what it is, why and how do our bodies use it. Sound is made up of multiple vibrations that can travel through the air and can be heard when they reach a person's eardrum. When the vibrations reach the eardrum, the brain turns this into sound. Vibrations even move left or right. Sound waves are longitudinal because they travel in straight lines. The sound can also travel in other different forms of waves which creates different sounds. Each sound has three main waveform characteristics, which are frequency, amplitude and wavelength. Frequency can also be known as pitch, which is measured in hertz. It is the horizontal distance between waves, and if the waves are shorter, the higher pitch the sound will be. Here's an example of what frequency is. Amplitude is the vertical distance between waves. As the waves travel, they set up patterns of disturbance throughout. The amplitude of a wave is its maximum disturbance from its undisturbed position. An example of amplitude would be... Wavelength is pretty self-explanatory as it is the entire length of the wave. The longer the wave, the longer the sound will last. Next, I would like to talk about the different types of microphones and what their uses are. Every single microphone is different, whether it be for a specific environment or the direction of the sound that it picks up. The condenser microphones and the dynamic microphone are the most commonly used microphones in the audio industry, but the ribbon microphones are also used, however they are only used by professionals. Now I will explain the different types and their strengths and weaknesses of recording. Dynamic microphones are good all round microphones which can be quite cheap and affordable compared to others. These types of microphones can be used for almost everything as they are sturdier and reliable in some situations compared to the ribbon and condenser microphone. Moving on to condenser microphones, these can range from cheap to very expensive microphones and are more sensitive than dynamic mics. They are very good at picking up higher frequencies in kilohertz. They are often used for recording dialogue however can be damaged by loud sounds. Moving on to the different types of microphone, Bidirectional. This is a microphone with a figure of eight polar pattern, which is highly sensitive and picks up sound from the front and the rear of the microphone. However, it has a low sensitivity and doesn't pick up sound very well from the sides. These are typically ribbon or large diaphragm condenser microphones, as well as being used mostly in situations like an interview where the sound can pick up the questions from both opposite directions. This type of microphone is also mostly used in indoor environments because it's so sensitive. Cardioid. Microphones with a cardioid polar pattern are most sensitive to what happens in front of them while rejecting sound from the sides and rear. The ability to reject sound from the rear makes cardioid mic useful for both indoor and outdoor environments where it's not desirable to capture a large amount of ambient sound. This microphone is very popular in situations like studio or live use where rear rejection cuts down on feedback and ambient noise. On the other hand, cardioid microphones will exhibit proximity effect which means the bass response will increase when the mic is very close to the sound source and also means that you have to point it straight at the sound source to get the best quality possible of recording because of its polar pattern. Supercardoid. This type of polar pattern is mostly used for very loud environment like for example live performances and it is also very good at rejecting ambient sounds in an outdoor environment. Omnidirectional. The omnidirectional microphones are equally sensitive to sound arriving from all angles as the microphone has an omnidirectional polar pattern. These type of microphones are good for situations like indoors when at a table recording group discussions for example. On the other hand they are really not good for an outdoor environment because it will pick up all ambient sounds. Sample rate. Sample rate is the number of samples of audio being carried per second. This can be measured in hertz or kilohertz. 
a CD sample rate, for example, is 44,100 hertz. Bit depth. In digital audio, using pulse code modulation, bit depth is the number of bits of information in each sample. In this section, I will talk about the typical equipment used in the audio industry. The last two years at college, we have had access and got lots of experience with using Zoom and shotgun microphones. The Zoom has always been useful for things like re simple recordings. The Zoom has always been useful for things like simple recordings or last minute as they are quick and easy to use. In college we have been using the shotgun microphones for recordings that are more harder to capture or more specific situations like outdoor environments. The shotgun microphone is more reliable when you need sound from one source. In terms of film and TV, dialogue is the most sufficient form of audio as it allows the audience to follow the narrative of the script and also can be engaging. Character dialogue allows the character to appear as a real person rather than a character made up by the storyteller which engages the audience more and helps them to understand what's going on. The dialogue would rarely be recorded on the set of TV shows or films as it would be usually recorded in post-production as this is to make the audio recording sound clearer which can help if you want to put over sound effects or other stuff. Another type of dialogue is commentary done by the narrator. This can give us extra information about the characters or what's going on within the film or TV show. Another way that this can help is by giving extra context to on-screen actions that might be happening and can ensure that the audience understands the message being conveyed. Another type of sound used in film and TV is music. This can add emotion and rhythm to the action but is not designed to detract from the on-screen action that is happening within the film or TV show. It can also indicate a change in mood, for example creepy slow music to highlight a not yet seen danger like this for example. Among the various different types of sound used in TV and film, a much more common type is sound effects. Sound effects are what make sound so important as everything in a film or TV show is or has a sound effect. Most sound effects used nowadays are added in post-production, however, some sounds are recorded on location with the use of the technique called Foley to give it a more natural and realistic feel. Foley is something that is used to create more realistic sound effects in post-production. Foley is also a reproduction of everyday objects turned into sound effects that are added into a TV or film production. An example of this would be a recording of breaking celery to create the effect of breaking a bone like this for example. Thank you very much for listening to my podcast about the theory of sound.